Pitch one, we are going to be watching the Minnesota Quad Ball Club and the Brown Bears Quad Ball Club. Right now, Minnesota's at four wins and seven losses this season, and Brown Bears are at six wins and nine losses. So this looks like it'll be a close game. I'm not 100% sure who's going to come out on top. Uh, I eventually will be joined by another person, Craig Garrison, but right now you'll just be hearing from me at the start of this game. And it looks like the, there are a few last minute equipment checks here and then we'll be doing brooms up as soon as people are ready. Hopefully we see lots of energy in this game. I know it can be hard first thing in the morning, but this is very exciting. Um, here at Nationals. And so HR is going to be starting the game. So it looks like Brown Bears have won the Quaffle and the uh, Minnesota has won the Bludgers. So we'll see if that is accurate and who comes out on top in these. So right now, yep, looks like Minnesota was able to gain Bludger control and we have Brown Bears with the Quaffle. Uh, Minnesota beating out the beater on Brown Bears. So now Brown Bears with no beaters, but bringing the ball up and we've got the keeper number 13 on Brown Bears. Uh, Will Richardson ha has the quaffle and passes, lots of passing back and forth up top. We see a little bit of um, less aggressive beaters on Minnesota. They're falling back towards their hoops, and we're seeing a 2-2 defense here. And we've got number 12 on Brown Bears, Thomas Flathers, with the ball. And back to N Richardson, 13, and passes. Not able to quite see who that player is, and Brown Bears end up getting beat out. Uh, Minnesota picks up the ball, but then they get beat, and it looks like they dropped the ball uh, behind them. So it's going to be a turnover and back to Brown Bears. So all of that, all those bludgers back and forth, and in the end, the same player ended up back with the ball. Um, so now we're just making sure everybody gets back into the spots they need, and we're ready. So now 13 Brown Bears with the ball, carrying it slowly, and we see kind of waiting at the top, passing it back and forth, uh, passing with David Owade, zero, back at the top, and Brown Bears 13 gets beat out, and we see the keeper on Minnesota, number 11, pick up the ball and score through the hoops. Looks like they passed first. So now we've got Keeper on Brown Bears bringing the ball up. Again, very slow play here we're seeing from the Brown Bears. Well, we see, saw a really fast play over on Minnesota, and they were able to score on that. So now 10, um, Muhim Ali with the ball, and then back to 13 on Brown Bears. Looks like the Brown Bears beater gets beat out, giving the Minnesota beaters a lot more aggression here. And they're trying to mi put some pressure on those uh, Quaffle players, or Quabal players. And no goal, but shot taken by 13, Will Richardson on Brown Bears. Minnesota picks it up, and looks like the keeper has the ball again. Um, can't quite make out their number here. It was a number 11 who was holding the ball, Jonah Furman. And now we're seeing, looks like Jade Gray, six ball carrying. And passes back to the keepers. Some slow passing again at the top. Uh, but we're seeing a lot more aggression from the Minnesota beaters who beat out one of the beaters. Uh, and we have a stoppage in play. Not sure what happened there. 
so we will wait to find out. Right now what I'm noticing is that Brown Bears uh, playing a lot slower, less aggressive of a beater game, whereas Minnesota is willing to make that pressure, willing to exchange those bludgers, and that seems to be working out pretty well for them. And so still trying to find out what happened here with the stoppage of play. So it's a yellow card for contact while beat to Brown Bears. Um, and I have Craig Garrison joining me here now, running a little bit late, but he's here when it matters. <laughs> Good morning, Quad Ball Nation. This is Craig Garrison here. Um, quite a great game of quad ball we have today. Um, so will you fill me up on the beginning of the game? Yeah, so far it's been a pretty slow game. Brown Bears have maintained possession of the quad ball for most of the time, but Minnesota, in the short amount of time they did have the quad ball, uh, went and scored. So right now the score is 10 to zero for Minnesota, and right now we have 10 on Brown Bears. Uh, Al Muhim Ali with the ball, and then passes to 13, uh, who passes to zero, David Awade. Uh, back to 13, we see the keeper 13 with the ball quite a bit here on Brown Bears, moving pretty slowly. Um, one thing I've noticed is that Minnesota is a lot more aggressive with their beaters and brown bears seem to be pretty pretty low-key with their bludgers. They don't want to get rid of them at all. Some things never changed. I noticed that Minnesota is running a hoops defense. They're one of the teams that really initiated the uh, chasers at the hoops defense. And so 11 on Minnesota carrying the ball up, looking to make another quick goal like they did before. And they're able to, passing back and forth with six and then scored by number 10. That was a fantastic uh, penetration on the left side of the pitch, then pass to the middle, then pass behind the hoops. Um, good score there from Minnesota. Yeah, like I said, doesn't take them a lot of time to score once they get that ball, but it seems like playing that hoops defense, they're giving Brown Bears a lot of time with the quaffle. Yeah, so as you said, Quattle. I mean, that whole play was really built off of a beater turnover and also a good strip there from Minnesota defense, and then a fast break, and then they scored. Yeah, and so now we have Brown Bears 13 carrying the ball up again, um, looking to score from behind, makes a reset up to the top. Shot there was about uh, six, eight feet over the top hoop. He probably wants that shot back, um, but luckily the Brown Bears have recovered and they're driving to the right side of the field. Yeah, they're looking to make that quick score like Minnesota did, but it doesn't look like they're able to with that hoop defense. I'm really noticing, you, you said it well, the whole Brown Bears offense is running through Richardson. Um, most of the players are just seeing him as a safety check, right? They, 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 they run around, they look for a drive, and they pass back to him. Oh, big kick here. Yeah, that was a kick from Minnesota. Um, there's no natural motion on kicks, so they were beat before that. Will that be a card for playing after beat? We'll have to find out. Looks like it's just a quad ball turnover. So it's going back to 13 Richardson on Brown Bears. Quad ball turnover and the white chaser just runs back and touches the hoops after being beat. And here's Richardson once again setting up the offense. Pass to the right hand side. Yeah, passes to, I can't see these numbers. These jerseys are hard when we're not seeing them from back. Right now, David Awade has the ball. It's fine, they seem to kind of be in a square offense. It's two up front and two behind. Pass back up to yeah, Richardson here. Good drive. Yeah. Oh, beat right after the shot from my eyes. Looks like there's going to be a ref consideration on whether that beat happened before or after the goal. I definitely heard from the Brown Bears sideline none while Minnesota still had a ball, so that definitely would have impacted Richardson, Richardson's choice there. So goal was no good beat before. My guess is that it was deemed natural motion. Hey, sometimes my eyes lie to me, especially this early in the morning. Um, but I do like Richardson's aggressiveness there. If the beaters are going to be really far back against the hoops and they're really sagging, you want to attack, probe, and find an open shot. The shot's really difficult when you have a, two chasers and a keeper guarding the hoops with their hands in the air, though, Soleil. Yeah, definitely. That's, I think, why it's so hard. So I'm seeing Minnesota does a big line change, a full line change of beaters and chasers and keepers. So now we have a new keeper on Minnesota bringing the ball up. 
Fantastic. We've got fresh blood in the field. Yeah, I'd love to see that quick sub. Minnesota has a very flat uh, formation here. He's looking for a shot, though. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to use that open space like we were talking about Brown Bears doing and maybe does it a little bit more effectively. Yep. Pass back up. Good reset. Lots of passing, but good beat, beat from Brown Bears there. Brown Bears are swarming. Or it's Bears swarm, and we have a good fast break here from Erickson. Oh, tackle attempt not good. Oh, fantastic pass when he's on the ground. Perfect. Oh, and Brown Bears score. And that's scored by... Can't quite see, but now uh, by 12 on Brown Bears, so that will be Thomas Flathers. I think the Bears have just awakened from hibernation. I uh, think so too. They yeah. seem to have energy, newfound energy in the last few seconds. Yeah, the defensive play into the offensive play um, is a little bit of a chaotic fast break um, with number 13 being tackled and then passes with that, but it seemed to work out for them. Yeah, and so looking at this, this seems like... Oh, and Brown Bears get the quad ball back and again going to Richardson, the keeper. Uh, and we're seeing Minnesota run back on defense as quick as they can. Uh, and they continue to maintain bludger control, which is really important, I think, in this game. Yeah, the second string or the second line for Minnesota is not looking as productive as their first line. Yeah, they're not taking advantage of those fast break opportunities quite as much. And they're not playing quite as aggr aggressive of a beater defense. But we are seeing a 2-2 from them, which is a good switch up. And 13. Oh, what a heat check here from Erickson. Uh, he dimes it out from about 14 feet away. Yeah, crazy shot there uh, by Richardson on that small hoop. And I guess that's why that hoop D works well is because the 2-2, that one's unguarded. Yeah, if you're going to really uh, be consistent with a hoops defense, you can't allow a hoop just to be open from 14 feet out for, for a wily <laughs> shot. Yeah, uh, I guess not. And so I meant... And now Minnesota scores, and I missed who scored that ball. Uh, this is number 28 from Minnesota. Um, we're starting to see kind of an NBA style here, uh, style play here where, you know, there's a heat check on one side, and he says, oh, I can do that too. Yeah, right? they got to prove each other, prove that they're better. All right, we got coaches yelling here. We got a no... We got a no beater situation. No but, dodgeball situation here. But Richardson... Let's see, I can't see the field of play. is a little bit obstructed. Uh, Brown Bears behind the hoop. Oh, fantastic tackle, but it might be from behind. Yeah, we'll have to find out. So for those watching at home, when there's a no dodgeball situation, you're usually coached to drive as aggressively as you can at the hoops because the only thing stopping you is another human body. Um, and then once you get wrapped up, you're going to pass it off for an easy bucket. Uh, Brown Bears were a little slow. Um, maybe crawling back into the cave, you know, on, on, on that drive there. Yeah, I think they were a little slow at the end, but a little bit quick at the start. I saw Richardson pass it off, maybe trying to not take all the goals here. It looks like 64 on red is in the box for contact from behind. Uh, so that's Nels Peranto. All right, here goes Erickson. Good pass on the drive. Pass. Oh, and, and it seems to be just mishandled, popped up in the air, and then dove down on the uh, keeper for Minnesota. And I'm going to wait till the keeper turns around so I can get his number for y'all. I do apologize. And while we're waiting for that identification, the keeper is walking up the pitch, driving to the right-hand side. Keeper is number... 56, which I'm not seeing on this roster, I so... <laughs> Fantastic goal there from Minnesota. I, too, do not have 56 uh, on the roster, so we'll just call him our nameless warrior out here from Minnesota. Perfect. I know they mentioned to me earlier that they uh, didn't get some of their jerseys in time, so that could be just a little difference there. I think they call that a wardrobe malfunction in the biz. <laughs> and so now we have a sub, and we're not seeing... Um, Richardson on anymore, so we have 23. Sitter Baupana carrying the ball up and passes to the new keeper on Brown Bears, number 12, Our Thomas Pronto's Flathers. back in the uh, pitch after a penalty. And and we've got Brown Bears behind, looking to make a pass back up to their reset, uh, who drives and dishes. Fantastic aggressive def defense here from the Nameless Warrior from Minnesota. The pass was there for the Brown Bears, but it was a little bit uh, low in the air. Yeah, and so Minnesota was able to get a hand on that and just went right over that Brown Bears player's head. Now we've got our nameless warrior carrying the ball up the field. Oh, good oh, juke. Oh, and looking to juke and... Oh, fantastic juke. And then he goes slips behind the hoops and shoots a shot there. We'll see if it's good. 
Yeah, not sure if they were beat before. I see that there, there's a uh, dodgeball on the ground, and they're, and he, they appear to be off broom. Our nameless warrior. So goal is deemed no good. Beat before. That so the ball has to fully leave your hand whenever you are beat for the score to be good. But then when you're making a pass, the ball can still be in your hand yeah. as long as you're in a natural throwing motion. Exactly. Yeah. And Minnesota still got... And goal is good. Scored by number three on Minnesota. That's Emily Sveda. I love to see just very solid quad ball play of uh, sucking in the whole team to one side of the, the pitch and then making a dime pass to the far small hoop um, for an easy bucket. Yeah, that's a fun play to make. Definitely love those drive-in dishes. Now we see Brown Bears trying to execute the same plan, but a little bit harder when Minnesota has bludger control. And they take a shot on the tall hoop, but they don't quite make it in. Uh, Manage to maintain possession of that quad ball, though. Only one dodgeball on defense here. Brown Bears beaters are being hyper-aggressive, making a hole. Yeah, this beater number three on Brown Bears. Uh, is a lot more aggressive and willing to throw that dodgeball. Yeah, this is um, Adi Minderata um, for the Brown Bears. Really hyper aggressive at the top of the key. Um, Minnesota does get a stop, unfortunately, here. I really thought Brown Bears kind of had some momentum on that um, half court offense. I think they did, but that number three made actually a beautiful under the leg beat, but then fell off of their broom. Oh um, no! And I think that that changed the momentum a little bit, which is rough. Yeah, that is one issue with the, <laughs> the broom play and being hyper athletic is sometimes your legs go one direction and the broom goes a different direction. Yeah. Oh, Minnesota oh. tries to do that same drive and dish, but Brown Bear is able to stop it. Minnesota still maintains possession of that quad ball and ends up scoring. Yeah, this was the number 11 from Minnesota. He was super patient behind the hoops. He didn't have anybody pressuring him. So he kind of just um, kind of just stood there behind the hoops, waited for a shot to open up, and he shot his shot. Score right now is 70-30 Minnesota, and the game time is 12.45, and we have a stoppage of play. Yeah, so what do you think the Brown Bears could do to get ahead right now? Good question. Um, I believe they need to find that same momentum they had for a couple plays there around nine minutes where it was defense of defensive stops um, near the hoops by their beaters, creating fast break opportunities that had more than one pass, right? When they try to hero ball it, where it's one player just being very selfish. Uh, well, one player trying to do it all by themselves. Let me say that. I don't want to say anybody's selfish out here. But one person uh, uh, driving by themselves is easy to beat. But if you have a couple passes, I think it makes a lot of opportunities. Um, other than that, I think just be a little bit more aggressive on offense with your with your beaters. Yeah, I have to agree, and I think some of their quad ball players, their um, chasers, and maybe not the keepers quite as much, just aren't super confident driving in, even when there's those open opportunities. And I would love to see some new um, chasers driving in because it's really relying on the same few players. Yeah, we have a, a, a Richardson show right now for the Brown Bears. Um, as you said, it's really just one person that has the confidence to drive in. Um, yeah, you need some players that can kind of see the hole and, and kind of capitalize on that. Yeah, and I think that uh, they do. They just need to trust in themselves. Hey, um, one thing about quad ball that's great is that the players come in freshman year of college and they may have never heard of the sport before. It's um, true. And the sport is wonderful at building confidence in young athletes. And yeah, we need to find a little confidence on the pitch today from the Brown Bears. Yeah. So we see a blood or dodgeball exchange. Um, oh, fantastic dish there from the Brown Bears. Oh, but unfortunately there was two dodgeballs on defense. Yeah. Um, so they were able to beat out both potential scorers. And now we've got the Minnesota keeper passing it off to uh, number six, I believe, on Minnesota. All right, Minnesota a little stagnant here in offense. They're biding their time. Very flat up top. They are running a box offense as well. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to shift that Brown Bears defense, passing it back and forth deep and high, uh, looking to drive and dish. And they're... Hard to say whether or not Minnesota's keeper was beat before. I heard a safe from a couple ARs, and I heard beat from a couple ARs. So I, I saw uh, dodgeballs flying everywhere on that play. Um, 
but I, I did see something good from Minnesota that they've uh, done a little bit better than the Brown Bears is sucking the defense to one side of the pitch and then passing multiple times to the opposite side. I think we got a call. I believe he was beat before the score. Yeah, that's what it looks like. So the goal is going to be no good for Minnesota, um, and Brown Bears keeper does have the ball, so they are safe in their zone. Richardson there. Uh, Richardson, Richardson fast looking break. to fast break with two bludgers on defense, oh. so it didn't work out. Um, hey, even even the Brown Bears star player sometimes gets a little hyper focus. Oh, Brown Bears recover. There's a little bit of a snafu on that side of the pitch. Yeah, looks like Brown Bears recovered, but then got beat again. Not sure if they should have gotten that quad ball, though. Looks like there's a little bit of rough discussion here whether or not that's going to be Minnesota's ball. Luckily, we have our, uh, our refs here to really just clear things up, explain the situation, moving the Minnesota player uh, back to the spot of potentially a, uh, a, a turnover in Minnesota's hands. Yeah, Minnesota has the ball in their hand. Yeah, it looks like maybe it was a beat before. They just put that uh, quad ball down slightly wrong, and then it leads to a quad ball turnover, so they I, get the ball. Hey, we were talking about confidence, and I think Richardson had a little too much confidence there. Um, we, we do want them to have confidence when the, the time is right. Yeah. Um, so I want to see them set up their offense a little bit better next time. Yeah, me too. And looks like now we have a fast break from Minnesota, passing to number three, who's able to get that bucket. That's, I think, the second or third goal they've scored in that exact same position. So I love to see a good cutter like that. It's a very fancy fashion from Minnesota, um, you know, passing the ball over 20 yards here uh, to players that are not marked or are open. Um, Brown Bears need to have their head a little bit more on a swivel and have their radar active so they can catch these players in the backside. Yeah, agreed. They need to not underestimate any players. We've got Richardson passing, but that player, number one, gets beat before. Once again, a little over-eager on the play there for the Brown Bears. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, they're committing to driving against dodgeballs. Um, so if you drive against the dodgeball, you're going to get beat and you can't score. Yeah, like you said, it seems like they're trying to prove they can do what Minnesota's doing, but Minnesota's doing that against no blood situation, no dodgeball situations, whereas uh, Brown Bears are trying against two dodgeballs here. Mm -hmm. And so we've got Minnesota 11, Jonah Furman carrying the ball up and passes to number three who's cutting and they score again. Love to see that. Beautiful stop by Jade Gray on six on Minnesota for Richardson, leading to a turnover for Minnesota. Oh, turnover to, for Minnesota who then gets beat but picks the ball back up and they're back on offense. Yeah, this is the third or fourth goal for Emily Zveda uh, for Minnesota. Um, she's absolutely killing it. it. There's a lot more to what she's, uh, what they're doing. Um, they are waiting behind, and then once Minnesota's drive happens on the opposite side, she's then uh, punching in to that small hoop and being incredibly open. Yeah, her timing on those cuts are just is just fantastic. Yes. I love that. Uh, and so we see 23 on Brown Bears pass to himself worked out really well. Managed I, to get out of the tackle by passing. To huge himself. technique there to uh, make yeah. the person stop tackling them, but just by having the ball out of their hands. You can't tackle somebody in quad ball if they don't have the ball. Oh, fantastic dodge here for the Brown Bears. Oh, pass back up to the top. Something that I'm seeing really well from Minnesota is they're really beating those players while they're trying to make that catch. And Richardson drives in and scores against three quad ball players. We got three chasers there, and he still manages to score. Yeah, he's a, he's a uh, one-man army, um, very confident out there. My favorite moment was all of the Brown Bears players behind the hoops with their hands up kind of waving at him, um, and then he just <laughs> drove in and scored himself. Yeah, and so I think Minnesota <laughs> needs to make sure to step up on that defense if they see that Richardson's driving in. Absolutely. I want to see a little bit more physicality on these drives um, from the defense. And so we've got our unnamed warrior carrying the ball up the field, looking, making some really nice fakes. Passes to 26. That's Bryn Gustafson. Uh, lots of passing from Minnesota. I love that. Oh, and Bryn catches and scores. <laughs> that is just so nice. That's such nice quad ball. I love when they're just passing all around the hoops, shifting that defense, and then they just pass to a cutter. So what they say in, uh, in basketball, but uh, claw ball here is uh, definitely applicable. They went all the way around the horn. That's where you pass all the way around the hoops, yeah. back to the original, and then another sneaky goal here for uh, Minnesota. It's very beautiful quad ball. Yeah, and we've got Brown Bears. They have the quad ball behind, looking to make a pick on their uh, quad ball player. But Minnesota adjusts and switches who's guarding. 
um, passing back and forth. Just about to get screened by the ref there. That was great awareness from the yeah. Brown Bear uh, player on the backside of the hoops, knowing that they were about to get beat and tossing it, but there wasn't enough strength on it to get it back to a Brown Bear player. Um, oh, fast we, break on the other side. Fast break, unnamed warrior trying to drive the ball up, uh, but gets tackled, and Minnesota tries to get the ball as well as Brown Bears, and they kind of had a scrap down there. Not I think we're going to get a push in the back here from the Brown Bears. We'll wait for the refs to make the call. Um, sometimes on defense, when you're a little frustrated, uh, you get a little chippy, and, and you do something that is um, not allowed in the rule book. See, interesting. I thought that the Minnesota player pushed the Brown Bears player before that. Oh, they I, got that I quad ball. So maybe, this situation. maybe they both got pushed, and we'll have to see what the refs saw there. M mutual pushes. Because <laughs> the quad ball or the play was stopped after the Brown Bears player pushed, but I think Minnesota pushed as well. So we'll have to see. So for viewers at home, the score is right now 110 to 40. And game time? Oh, so I apologize. The score is 100 to 40, and the game time is? And the game time is 17.56. Play is resumed. Play is resumed, and Minnesota has the ball, but Brown Bears have them pretty wrapped up down at their hoops. Uh, and one of the hoops has fallen, so it doesn't look like even if they maintain possession, I don't think they're going to be able to. Oh, massive score. play oh, here crazy. from the Minnesota player, wrenching the claw ball out from the Brown Bear defensive player. Uh, but the Brown Bears end up recovering after the wrench. The Brown Bear beaters just kind of watched that play happen <laughs> when they probably should have made that beat on that player who was getting tackled. Um, especially when they have bludger control like they do, but we're seeing a sub from one of them here, so maybe there's a little bit of uh, exhaustion coming in. We're pretty far into the game. I think the Brown Bear beaters <laughs> and Minnesota beaters, everyone was just like, all right, our two strongest players are now battling it out on the ground. Yeah. We're going to see who's going to win here. <laughs> yeah, that's fun to watch. Uh, so we've got a new keeper for Brown Bears carrying the ball up and passes to number 10, uh, who drives in, makes a fake and passes it down to the bottom. Um, looks like Minnesota tries to make a beat, but misses that beat. Oh, fantastic oh, pick fantastic here. fantastic from... pick, and is not used by <laughs> Brown Bears um, as effectively as they probably could have. And there's passing lots, so I'm wondering if they're going to get possession. Hey, I'm just going to call something out here for the Brown Bears. Um, Ali Mahim, number 10, is in fantastic position, but some of their own players are kind of taking the ball away from them um, and kind of like uh, scuffing some of the plays, if you will. Yeah, I'm noticing that. Um, even after um, she made that fantastic pick at the bottom, the ball carrier didn't use the pick and went for a hoop that was falling over, and that's why they didn't score on this play. Yeah, so. and on this last one, uh, Allie, she was uh, bending over <laughs> to pick the quad ball, and then number 12 comes and scoops it. But number 12 is going to redeem himself uh, uh, with a score in the top hoop. That's Thomas Flathers scores on that tall hoop there on Brown Bears. So now the score would be 100 to 50 for Minnesota. And we've got our unnamed warrior on Minnesota carrying the ball up the pitch. Yep. Um, yep. Passes to number 46. We were at 19.30 nearing the 20 minute stoppage. Just a reminder, once 20 minutes hits, um, the team with possession of the ball will have one more possession to attempt to score. And there, there was a turnover, so Brown Bears do have that quad ball right now, and they are passing back and forth. It'd be really big here to get uh, one bucket beforehand and make the game a little closer. Oh, And they do it. Just go here. Minnesota wants to get possession of the ball. And that was number 12 on Brown Bears again, Jordan Fa Flathers. And so we had our unnamed warrior carrying it up, but they pass it off to uh, Chaser on Minnesota, and they're taking it really slow. Looks like... Maybe they're hoping to get back bludger control before that last uh, play finishes. So they're trying to slow the play down, get that bludger control back before they lose possession of that quad ball. I think you're exactly correct, Soleil, that um, you slow down the offense and you wait for your and beaters to make a play to get, <laughs> get dodgeball control, but then immediately throw it away. You don't want to see that. Yeah, they had <laughs> dodgeball control for just a split second there. Uh, and now you see number... I think 38 on 36 on Minnesota, really oh. trying. Oh. And was we that not a, through the hoop? We had a fantastic block here from the Brown Bears. Oh. Launched himself in the air. But the nameless hero, with <laughs> such calm confidence, just chunks the quad ball through the hoops. And we have a score to 60. 
and it's 20 minutes here uh, in Round Rock, Texas. Um, and so, hey, um, I think Brown Bears have a little bit of momentum here, but Minnesota right now is looking like a, a, a much classier act and, and just smoother on offense and defense. I think so, too. They're a little bit more coordinated with their plays, and all of their players are uh, confident with that quad ball and confident in their role on pitch. And they know exactly where they're supposed to be and when. So, um, But they didn't manage to get back uh, dodgeball control before the 20-minute mark, so we'll have to see how the play goes for the with the flag runner on pitch. I think you're exactly right. They all know where their role is. Um, it, they've been well coached. They're, they're a team with, with great chemistry. Um, they're passing to each other. They know where each other are, maybe before even looking. Um, and then the Brown Bears, a little bit more um, impromptu, um, a little bit of improv on the field, um, kind of creating the situation for themselves. Um, that can work out sometimes. Um, but, I, but I have a little more confidence in Minnesota in the second half of this game. Yeah, I think so too. And I'm also hearing a lot more communication from Minnesota here. All right, Quad Ball Nation. Uh, this is Craig Garrison. And Soleil Heaney. And we're going to take a quick break um, while we uh, let the coaches and, and teams figure things out. Hi, Quad Ball Nation. This is Craig Garrison. And Soleil Heaney. We're back at the game, and uh, we're about to have a start here, and the uh, flag runner is on the pitch. The score is 110 to 60, Minnesota's way. And right now we see the um, Seekers who are out, and we've got number 11, Jonah Furman from Minnesota, and number one, Karsten Asua from Brown Bears. Furman and Asua are about to be released while the Brown Bears are trying to score on the other side of the pitch. Yeah, Brown Bears, we've got Richardson back out looking to drive and scores through that top hoop, does what he does best, drives in and scores. Yeah, Richardson is uh, definitely a scorer. Um, he, he has a great uh, jump cut. Um, he's able to get by the first defender almost every single time, um, especially if there are no dodgeballs on that side of the pitch. The dodgeballs will now be focused on stopping teams from um, pulling the flag, so there might be a lot more options for Richardson because there's not as much uh, dodgeball defense. Yeah, that's true. And we're seeing exact, oh, big stop from Brown Bears. We was going to say we're seeing really good play from Minnesota. They passed lots of really sharp bullet passes, and now Brown Bears driving in for a fast break. And Brown Bears score. So, so far, they've scored two goals while flag runners have been on pitch, and that was scored by Thomas Blathers. So I don't know if this is just a coaching difference uh, during the stoppage, or Brown Bears are just thriving in the chaos. As we said, they're able to improvise during uh, um, flag flag runner on pitch play. I think oh. it... And Once again, we have a turnover here, and Brown Bears run it back. This is three goals back-to-back-to-back to back to back for the Brown Bears. Uh, the score is now 110-90. Um, if I'm Minnesota, I'm going to be a little bit worried with the, with, with the series of events. Yeah, Minnesota's going to really have to step it up on defense and make some bigger hits, which we're seeing from Brown Bears. And oh, we just had and a flag grab here from Brown Bears. They've turned this game all the way around. Let's see if the refs call it good. Yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, for, for those watching at home, uh, the flag runner catch um, is actually 35 points added to your current point total right now. Yeah, um, which if this catch is good, will put them ahead. Yeah, it'll put them ahead of Minnesota. Um, this is a wacky turn of events. Um, I'm very proud of the Brown Bears, though. Um, they seem to have found their mojo. Yeah, they really love this. Um, I think no uh, dodgeball situations and being able to drive. They're a physical team, and they're able to step up high on defense. So if this, so the catch from Karsten Asua is good. Uh, for Brown Bears. So new score right now is 110 Minnesota, 125 Brown Bears, and the set score is 170. For those watching at home, the set score means 
that is the score to reach to end the game and win the game. Yeah, and so I think uh, timeout is called for Minnesota, which makes sense. They very quickly went from having a, what was it, 40 point lead? Mm -hmm. uh, and now they are down by 15 points. So that's gonna be tough to recover from, but now their dodgeballs are gonna be back in play on quad balls. So maybe they're gonna be back to their, back in where they thrive the most, which is not chaos. <laughs> right, yeah, so the Brown Bears, um, they, they need to know that they are in the lead but that when they had the same situation prior to the flag runner on the pitch, um, they were losing pretty handedly. But that was a 65-point swing. Um, you really have to hand it to the Brown Bears there to, to bring this game into a very, very, very tight game. Uh, game one here um, in Round Rock, Texas. This is super exciting, Soleil. Yeah, this is a really fun first game of the day. Um, I love to see this type of quad ball. Yeah, don't sleep on the Brown Bears. That's all I'm going to say. No, they're not in hibernation. <laughs> no, no longer in hibernation. I'll continue talking now. Um, all right, the players are getting back on the field. Uh, Brown Bears are probably feeling jazzed. Uh, Minnesota seems determined. I'm seeing a lot of looks and faces of, like, we're not going to let another bucket in. Um, they've had too much. Yeah, and we see Minnesota does have the quad ball right now, so we'll see if they're able to make something with this. And they also have uh, dodgeball control. And so we have number 11 uh, driving in, makes a pass, and goal is called good by the ref. Oh, uh, great goal there from Minnesota. Um, score now is uh, yeah, 120 to 120. 120 to 125. 120 to 125. Thank yes. you, Soleil. I always forget about the five, um, you know, basic mathing out here. Yeah, and so we've got... Uh, Ali Muhim and Richardson passing the ball back and forth, and now we've got uh, zero in that play as well. David Awade uh, taking it slow like the Brown Bears like to do when there's uh, dodgeballs on defense. We're and seeing three up top for the Brown Bears. Good passing here. Richardson's driving. Um, there's a one dodgeball situation that just opened up. Uh, oh, and Brown Bears are able to score on that play. Fantastic play there. Um, I want to give a shout out. It's number 12 here for the Brown Bears. Used his body to push the Minnesota defender out of the way so that he could wrap around and shove it to the hoops. And Minnesota was able to score on that small hoop in a very quick amount of time. We are now 130-135 uh, Brown Bears way. Uh, this game is neck and neck. Score for score. No no dodgeball no situation dodge here balls. for Richardson. And Richardson loves a no dodgeball situation, driving in and scores on a guarded hoop. It's now 145, 130, Brown Bears. Minnesota's gonna get the ball. Uh, Richardson, once again, he uh, drove all the way to the left-hand side, around the player, jumped in the air, and then scooped the ball through the, through the small hoop here. Crazy to watch, but also crazy to watch that um, from Jade Gray on Minnesota. Holy moly, we have a scoring fest here uh, in Round Rock, Texas. It's 140-145, Minnesota uh, scores immediately back. That was a floater here from Minnesota. Um, we are seeing lots of different shot selections today. Yeah. Uh, not just dunks, we're seeing uh, anything from uh, six feet, eight feet, and we've also seen something like a, a 16 foot shot yeah. here from Richardson. Um, some shooting prowess here today. Yeah, and uh, this is crazy. There only needs to be 30 more points scored by either team in order to end the game. So right now we've got Jordan Flathers driving in, passes to number zero. Uh, you see the beaters try to do a dodgeball exchange and they manage to get... Um, One dodgeball situation here for Minnesota. Yeah, I wonder if they'll take advantage of that. And they do. Uh, so Minnesota scores. So the score is one. one it's 150 to 145 uh, Minnesota way. Ball back on the other side of the pitch. We're driving here by the Brown Bears. Good Bears dodgeball block. And he might be beat ball. from behind. Let's see. Oh, uh, we'll have to see. One of the refs called the goal good. And we have a ref stoppage here. So we'll have to find out if they were beat from behind. One of my favorite plays in quad ball is a, a seamless... Uh, a dodgeball block with one hand um, yeah. while you're driving. Uh, it's like the ultimate denial, the ultimate diss of just, you think you're going to stop somebody from scoring and then he's able to deflect the ball downwards. And that looks just so effortless from them on Brown Bears. Absolutely did. No calls on the play. No calls on the, the block play. Is Goal good. is good. Yeah, there was one block here from the Brown Bears and then one of the other dodgeballs missed and he's able to score from behind the hoops. Um, and we have one... 155 to 150 here. Brown Bears are in the lead by five points. It's a nail biter. 
this is crazy. This is this is the best quad ball to watch. So if you're watching at home, this is a good game to be watching. Yeah, you're getting your uh, you're not getting your feet wet here. You're going all in. Um, game one of of, of uh, U.S. Nationals here. Minnesota's bringing the ball up. There's a little bit of a beater interaction at the top. Minnesota looks to distract the dodgeballs, and they're successful at distracting. And Jade Gray on Minnesota scores, so now they're up by five points. Uh, only ten more points needed to score by Minnesota, which is one goal or two more goals from Brown Bears. So if they continue this back-and-forth exchange, Minnesota will come back on top. But if Brown Bears can score here and then make just one stop and continue their goal streak, then they'll come out on top. That's absolutely been the trend, Soleil, is it's been a tit-for-tat kind of thing with Brown Bears just falling behind by one with that tit-tat. So Minnesota right now is, is, is favorable to win this game. Next bucket wins for them. Yeah, and Brown Bears playing a very slow game right now once again. Um, looking to make some picks and get that drive. Uh, Jordan Flathers driving in and passes to Richardson. Uh, Richardson shoots, but it's blocked by number 10 on Minnesota. Uh, and Minnesota keeper has the ball in their zone, and Flathers gets a little <laughs> bit too excited, strips the ball, which is not allowed. Uh, I, don't, I don't hear it, but I hear it in my head as, you can't do that. <laughs> um, so it's going to be a yellow card for uh, contact with the protected keeper, which is rough for Brown Bears at this point in the game. It's a very frivolous foul to make at this point in the game when the next bucket wins for Minnesota. Um, just kind of a lapse of mind there for uh, the Brown Bears on making that foul. It's hard to get caught up. You get caught up in the excitement of the game, and you're like, oh, I could take that quad ball. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you're, you're kind of like a, a dog out there, right? You see the quad ball, you're going to go after it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's my ball. Yeah, mine, yeah. <laughs> All right, Minnesota walking the ball up. If they score on this play, they win the game. Pretty slow, the waiting for their beaters to go in and create some opportunities for the Minnesota's not a team that's going to drive on two beaters. No, they've shown all game that they're going to wait for the perfect moment, the perfect time. I got to say, I'm really impressed by the beating with number 36 on Minnesota today. Um, that's Meredith McDowell. I haven't mentioned uh, her name yet, but... And Minnesota shoots and... Uh,